Grade 11 as students. Today, we are going to explain Activity 2, Genes and Alleles of Chapter 4, Biological Identity. This activity will be divided into two parts. In Part 1, we will be explaining the course, the relation between genes, alleles, and phenotype. And in Part 2, we will be solving some application exercises about this activity. Let's start our activity with a problem situation. To save human lives, blood transfusions, the transfer of blood from one person to another, are performed. Blood group cards provide essential information for performing them, for performing blood transfusions. Each individual has his own blood group card, which, uh, which uh, is considered as a biological identity. Hmm? So uh, I, have, I am from group O positive, so my uh, blood group card shows that I am of group O positive. Thierry and Pauline brought their cards in class and wonder about the fact that one is of group A and the other of group B, while the character blood group, the phenotype blood group, is determined by a single gene, one gene located on chromosome 9. So their teacher explains that the existence of four different blood groups, group A, group B, group O, and group AB, is due to the presence or the absence of markers, protein molecules called antigens, antigen A and or antigen B on the membrane of the red blood cells. So there is a single gene located on chromosome 9 that codes for the blood group, but we have four different phenotypes, four different blood groups. So the problem is, how can we explain that with the same gene, with a single gene, there can be several different blood groups. As you know, one gene codes for one protein and the expression of this protein leads to the phenotype, to the appearance of our characters. So how can we obtain from one gene several phenotypes? So the problem is written in the form of a question. Now to answer the problem, we formulate several hypotheses. So formulate one adequate hypothesis. How can you explain the fact that one single gene may lead to the appearance of different characters? The, the hypothesis is there are several versions or alleles or forms for the blood group gene that according to their expression, result in the formation of different blood groups. So since we have many alleles, many forms of the same gene, this leads to the appearance of many characters or phenotypes. I guess you know this information. You know that one gene may have several alleles or forms, and the expression of these alleles into proteins leads to different phenotypes. Now, what is the relation between polyallelism, alleles, phenotypes, and polymorphism? Here we have some definitions. First, allele is a version or form of a gene, is a copy of a gene. And a gene, as you know, is a DNA fragment characterized by a specific nucleotide sequence and occupies a particular place or locus on a chromosome. Polyallelism, poly from Greek, means several or many. Allelism, alleles. So it's the presence of several alleles for the same gene. For example, if we take the example of the ABO system of the blood group, you have alleles A, B, and O. Now, for uh, the hemoglobin, as you know, as we have explained in the activity one, 
the beta globin gene exists in many forms. In a normal form called HBA, that codes for a normal beta globin protein, leading to the formation of a normal hemoglobin and normal red blood cells, count and shape. And uh, also, the beta globin gene may be uh, found in an abnormal form which is the HBS allele. This HBS allele codes for an abnormal beta-globin protein leading to a fibrous abnormal hemoglobin that precipitates in the red blood cell, altering the blood circulation and leading to anemia, which is the sickle cell anemia. So here we have uh, a, a gene having several alleles. It's the polyallelism the occurrence of many alleles of a same gene in the population. Another definition, polymorphism, also from Greek, poly means several, and morph means form. As you know, most of our uh, scientific terms derive from a Greek or Latin. Polymorphism, it's, it is the occurrence of two or more different phenotypes within a population. Also, we take the example of the blood group. We have different phenotypes. We have blood group A if we have the allele A. We have blood group B if we have the allele B. We have the blood group O if we have the allele O. Also, concerning the uh, hair color, we have black hair, red hair, blonde hair, etc. So, the presence of different phenotypes is called polymorphism. Now, the question is, what is the relation between these three terms? Polyallelism, the presence of many alleles. The presence of many alleles induces the polymorphism. So polyallelism induces polymorphism. Since we have different alleles, so the different alleles are differently transcribed, then differently uh, translated to give different proteins that are expressed in different phenotypes. What is the cause or the origin of polyallelism? The polyallelism that leads to the genetic diversity is due to modifications, changes, that affect the nucleotide sequence of a gene, leading thus to the formation of many alleles. So the uh, formation of many alleles of a gene are due to modifications in this gene. These modifications are called genetic mutations. Genetic, in the, at the level of gene, mutations means modifications. But don't confuse between mutations and abnormalities. Abnormalities is something uh, wrong occurring uh, in, uh, the gene, uh, in the gene sequence, etc. But mutation is a change that could be either beneficial as uh, for the example of blood group and uh, the hair color, etc., or harmful, like in the case of the sickle cell anemia. So mutations are not always harmful. They can be beneficial, leading to polymorphism and genetic diversity, and they can uh, be harmful, leading to the appearance of genetic diseases. As a definition, genetic mutations are hereditary. They are inherited from our parents, spontaneous. They, uh, they occur uh, by accident. Changes affecting the nucleotide sequence of a gene. They occur naturally during DNA replication. Note that uh, sometimes our environment can affect our genotype. So uh, some environmental agents called mutagenic agents, such as the UV rays and the X-rays and certain chemicals, may lead to mutations in the gene and thus affecting our phenotype. But most of uh, mutations are inherited from our parents. What are the types of these genetic mutations? We have three types, mutation by substitution, the replacement of one or more nucleotides by another. Mutation by deletion, it's the loss of a nucleotide. 
Mutation by insertion is the addition of a nucleotide. We are going to uh, explain the mutation by substitution. We uh, take the case of uh, the beta-globin gene uh, that is at the origin of the different forms of hemoglobin, thus different forms of anemia. In the case of sickle cell anemia, we have uh, only uh, represented the, a part of the gene coding for the beta-globin of hemoglobin. We have represented here five codons from codon 4 to codon 8. Concerning the uh, normal DNA transcribed strand, we have these codons. While in the case of sickle cell anemia, the abnormal DNA transcribed strand has this sequence. Compare both DNA strands. Verb compare, you have to state the similarities and the differences. Concerning the similarities, both DNA strands have same codons, 4, 5, 6, and 8. While concerning the differences, we say both DNA strands are identical for all codons except for codon 7, where the second nucleotide T in the normal allele is replaced by A in the abnormal allele. This modification is called substitution since one nucleotide is replaced by another. This substitution surely affects the messenger RNA sequence since the mRNA is complementary to the DNA transcribed strand. So phase 2T we have A in the mRNA in codon 7 whereas for the mRNA complementary to the abnormal DNA strand in codon 7 we have GUG instead of GAG. This modification in the mRNA will affect the amino acid sequence since the protein is derived from the mRNA by translation. One codon codes for one amino acid. The codon GAG, according to genetic code table, codes for the glutamic acid, whereas GUG codes for valine. So the amino acid sequence here has changed valine instead of glutamic acid. So we have a mutant and abnormal hemoglobin HBS. In this case, the substitution affects the DNA sequence and the protein sequence and affects the phenotype. <coughs> now, what would be the consequence on the protein and the phenotype of the replacement in this uh, time in the normal DNA strand of the nucleotide T in the codon 5 here? What could be the consequence of the replacement of T in codon 5 with G? The mRNA will be in codon 5 CCA in the normal allele while in the abnormal allele, for the abnormal allele, in the mRNA sequence, the codon 5 will be CCC. So the mutation in the DNA transcribed strand changed the mRNA sequence. Now, according to the genetic table, the, both codons CCA and CCC, CCA and CCC, code for the same amino acid, which is PRO. In this case, the amino acid sequence didn't change. So we have in both cases normal hemoglobin. So we can say that in this case, the substitution does not affect the phenotype. So it is called a silent mutation when the substitution does not affect the protein sequence and has no consequences on the phenotype, we call it a, subs uh, a silent substitution or a silent mutation. When the replacement of one nucleotide by another doesn't affect the amino acid sequence, 
thus doesn't affect the phenotype. The mutation is called silent. So we can say that a substitution mutation is the replacement of one nucleotide by another. It can affect the protein sequence as well as the phenotype. As it can be silent, it occurs without any effect on the protein and the phenotype. Thanks for listening. In the next video, we are going to explain the other types of mutations, mutation by deletion and mutation by insertion. Bye-bye.